May the Lord God bless each and every one of you in the viewing, in the viewing of this video. I am your brother Joseph Herbert Jr. And may the God of all peace, the God of all creation, bless you with wisdom and understanding and insight, revelation, knowledge. Um, I want to talk about exercising dominion exercising dominion us as born again Christians have authority we have authority given by the Lord Jesus Christ we are given the authority and the power from the most high from the God of all creation the spirit of truth the spirit of wisdom we have dominion and most don't believe at the degree of their faith that they have this because you have professed believers that don't talk about the casting out of devils or the the gift of tongues you know that's that's edif that edifies you it edifies you to have um when you seek the presence of God you have you have the necessary edification in the Seeking him in prayer, seeking him in, in, in the power of his spirit, whether it's prayer, whether it's worship, or whether it is the gathering of the saints in the church, in a healthy church at that, um, and reading his word, you receive his power, his strength. He told uh, his disciples in, in Luke, I believe it's Luke chapter 10, he says, behold, I give you the power and the authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. And then he, but he also states this to not rejoice in this alone, but rejoice that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. That's a high critical point. That's a high critical um verse and in, in your life if you are true truly born again if you are truly born again as a christian um you should know that your name is written in the lamb's book of life and so one of the things is about dominion yes jesus mentioned towards the end of mark and like i said most don't believe to the degree where they're at most just have knowledge of scripture, but they have no power. They have no, no authority. Like the sons of Sceva in the book of Acts, they thought they had power to cast out devils, just like uh, um, one of the disciples, one of the, the apostles. And yet the demons asked uh, Jesus, I know. Paul I know, but who are you? And then the demons in the individual, uh, it, it says they, they, they tore them apart, tore their, their clothes off, and they ran out naked. So do you, do you have dominion? And not only do you have dominion, are you exercising dominion? Because Jesus says all these signs will follow for them that believe. They will cast out devils in my name. And they will speak with new tongues. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt hurt them. And they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. That is dominion, that is power. Jesus gives this to his people. Do you believe that? Are you capable of believing that you have this power? Because if you don't believe, it will be made manifest. And even if you profess to be a Christian and preach this, It'll be discerned. It'll be e easily manifested in your messages or in your works that you do inside of God if you are a Christian. Now, Brother Joseph loves the Word of God as any other Christian should. And I was reading also in John chapter 5 um, when Jesus healed the impotent man. And I'm going to start in verse uh, 6. Matter of fact, verse 5, it says this, And a certain man was there which had 
and infirmity 38 years, when Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he says to him, will you be made whole? The impotent man answered him, sit, uh, sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. Then Jesus says to him, rise, take up your bed and walk. Now, Jesus being God manifested in the flesh. Yes, he is demonstrating that you too, if you profess to be born again and believe and obey, you too have the same power. Jesus says, greater works, you have more than these. So he says, he tells the impotent man, rise, take up your bed and walk. At the same time in that verse, sin is forgiven because of his faith. Sin is forgiven. Jesus Christ, the son of God, has power to forgive sin, which upset the Jews, was upset the Pharisees. And verse nine, it says, and immediately the man was made whole. And took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. Now, and it says this, the Jews, the Jews were, they, they, they noticed this guy. They noticed this guy was, was why, you know, he was carrying his bed on the Sabbath day. They asked him, um, what, you know, he that, you know, they asked him, um, where is that? I just saw it. Uh, the Jews therefore said to him, that was cured. It is the Sabbath, here it is. It is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for you to carry your bed. He answered them, He that made me whole, the same said to me, Take up your bed and walk. Now I'm about to, I'm about to get to this, this, this beautiful point right here in verse 17. But I'm in verse 11. Now pay, pay close attention to this. Now, verse 12. They asked, Then they asked him, What man is that which said to you, Take up your bed and walk? And he that was be he that was healed uh, who knew not who it was for Jesus had conveyed himself away a multitude being in that place and afterwards Jesus finds him in the temple and said to him now he says this and he makes this very clear he he and I believe he he had, he was he was uh, what's the word I'm looking for Holy Ghost. Uh, I believe he sternly looked at him and said this, Behold, you are made whole, sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. Now, it had to be something on him that caused the man to be impotent for him not to get up, for him not to uh, be healed, even on the Sabbath day, because it was the Sabbath day that the impotent man was laying near the water. So what if he did get healed at Bethesda? At Bethesda, what if he did get healed with the stern in the morning? What if he had the strength to go into the water, into the pool, and be healed, and let the angels stir the water up, and he be healed? Would he still took up his bed and walk? And the Pharisees, not the Pharisees, but the Jews would have saw it. That's the question. But Jesus healed them. Behold, you are made whole. Sin no more. Lest a worse thing come upon you. What worse thing? Demons are terrifying people because of sin, because of open doors, because of um, what the flesh wants to do, what your mindset in the unbeliever or anyone who is loving evil more than good or in the way of the wicked. And there's many explanations about that. And verse 15, the man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole. And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. Now, pay close attention in this verse in 17. Now, this is what I... This is what is being described as dominion. And this is the same dominion that should be in the, in the life of the believer. Jesus tells the Jews, he says, my father work. My father works here and I work. That's letting the Jews know, hey, I do this because my father is in control. God, the father is in control. And 
he works because God, because Jesus, Jesus knows the Father, and the Father knows Jesus. The Son honors the Father, the Father honors the Son. Therefore, the Jews sought to more to kill him because he not only had broken the Sabbath, that's what they say, but said also that God was the God was his father, making himself equal with God. So they they saw that, they took it as who is this man? You just another man, as another sinful man. And but Jesus knew their hearts. Jesus knew their hearts. Then Jesus answers and says to them, Verily, verily, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of himself but what he sees the Father do. For what things soever he does, these also does the Son likewise. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all things that himself does, and he, shall, he will show him greater works than these that you may marvel. So, exercise and dominion. Are you working the word of God says in Proverbs, to commit your works to the Lord and your thoughts will be established. Meaning your thoughts will be sound because of the, of the reverent, if you fear the Lord, the reverential fear of the Lord that gives wisdom because he gives, the, he gives wisdom to all men favorably and he wants you to be wise. He will liken you to a wise man. And that's what Jesus said in Matthew 7. He, he, he says, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man that built this house on the rock. And the rains descend and the floods come and the winds blow and it beats on the house and it does not fall because it was founded on the rock. Meaning your foundation, the beginning of your salvation is founded in Christ Jesus and it should be founded in Christ Jesus. So exercising dominion, Jesus lets Let's the Jews know that, hey, my father works here and I work. That's what he says. That's what he's expressing in dominion. And so if you're not exercising dominion, and there are many people who thought they had power, like uh, Simon the Sorcerer. He thought he, he, he made himself to be a man that, like he was God, and deceived the people in the magic uh, sorcery witchcraft that he was doing and yet he wanted the power of the Holy Ghost he thought he can buy the Spirit of God he think he can buy he thought he can buy the Holy Ghost and so I forgot who was with, that rebuked him either Peter or Paul gotta revisit so he got rebuked Simon the sorcerer got rebuked and it, it, sharply, he got sharply rebuked, thinking that he can buy the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost, God is all power. He, he, he knows your secret thought life. He knows everything. All things are naked before the Lord. All things are given. All things are for him made. And without him, nothing was made that was made. You must understand that. You, when dominion is established in the believer, the demons, the demons tremble. The demons know when, when a Christian who who serves God faithfully, who is obedient to Jesus, the demons, demons scared, are scared. Demons tremble. They and, and you know, holiness is the only way. Um, and the the important. Uh, thing for the life of the believer to keep you faithful. Holiness unto God. That's why it's very important to obey what he said. To be holy for the Lord your God in, he in heaven is holy. I want to look on a transition to the book of Nahum because I was reading it and it was talking about the, the wrath of the Lord and you know when us as believers we learn in our growth in the, as a believer as a Christian, we grow to learn that vengeance belongs to the Lord. Vengeance belongs to God Almighty. And we are not to avenge ourselves on anybody because that will be the flesh. That will be the, the works of the flesh that are made evident, which is uh, described in Galatians chapter 5. Vengeance belongs to the Lord, yet he is a jealous God. 
He does not want you to serve other gods or give your heart to idols and things of this world. He does not want you to set your affections on the things on the, of the earth, but yet set your affections on the things above. And he wants to give you power. He wants to give you wisdom. He wants to give you dominion. The word of God says in Psalms, I believe it's 133, if I'm not mistaken. I believe it's, no, Psalms 119, 133. It says this, to order my steps in your word. Let not any iniquity have dominion over me. So iniquity can have dominion over a person's life, just like the impotent man in John chapter 4. That I just read. No, is it John chapter 4? Did I just read that? John chapter 4, John chapter 5. No, John chapter 5. Yeah, I was correct. So the impotent man had was, is it's because of sin. Because Jesus told him, sin no more, lest the worst thing come upon you. So sin can have domain over a person who gives into it. When sin is conceived, when temptation is conceived and sin is being birthed, then there is consequences for that, and you don't want that for your life. So the book of Nahum talks about the wrath of God. It says this in verse 1. It says, the burden of Nineveh, the book of the vision of Nahum the Elkishite. God is jealous, and the Lord revenges. The Lord revenges, and is furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries. Adversaries is another word for enemy. And he reserves wrath for his enemies. The Lord is slow to anger. He is slow to anger. You got to recognize that. Anger, when you sin out of anger, you stir up the anger of the Lord. So the word of God says in James that to be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath, because the wrath of man does not produce or work the righteousness of God. God is slow to anger, so you must be slow to anger. And it says, the Lord is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit or he will not acquit the wicked, meaning he will not uh, leave the wicked guiltless. The Lord has his way in the whirlwind and in the storm and the clouds are the dust of his feet. He rebukes the sea and makes it dry and dries up all the rivers. Bashan languishes, meaning Bashan in these cities, we see Bashan languishes and Carmel and the flower of Lebanon languishes. Languishes means being made weak, being made feeble. So Bashan was made feeble. Bashan being made feeble, Carmel being made feeble and weak, and, Le and Lebanon being made feeble and weak. Because of the Lord's rebuke, the Lord's uh, power and authority, the Lord is the creator of all things. He should be greatly feared and greatly reverenced. And so that is authority. You see that and you see that in Jesus. You see that in because he is the, the, the number one example out of all the righteous prophets. King David, you no, know, there's ex exercise dominion. Um, the prophet Samuel exercised dominion. All these uh, major and minor prophets exercised dominion and because the spirit of the Lord was on them. And it says this in verse 5, the mountains quake at him, the Lord, and the hills melt and the earth is burnt at the presence. Yes, the world and all that dwell therein, who can stand before his indignation, meaning his holy anger, his, his wrath. You as a believer, this is this should put the holy, the holy fear of the Lord in, in you. In you to understand that. The wrath of God abides on the children of disobedience. And when you when you die, when a person dies in iniquity or dies in sin, there is harsh consequences. The indignation of the Lord is at hand. And so he judges your life. He judges your thoughts. He judges your words and your deeds. Everything you have ever thought of and said, when you die as an unbeliever or die in pride and rebellion, there is consequences and you'll be tossed in hell with the demons and you'll be tormented. And then the second death, which is the lake of fire, you'll be you'll be judged. You'll be you'll be judged by the Lord, meaning you'll be at the throne of the Lord and judged. 
and then the lake of fire, which is the second death. So who can stand before his indignation? The proud will say, I can. The devil thought he could. The devil, I don't, you know, it sometimes it baffles me because when Lucifer was in heaven, I'm like, man, this man was in glory. This man was in the presence of the Lord with the holy angels. All the angels was holy at the time. And the human mind cannot fathom how beautiful heaven is. But yet, Lucifer said, I will ascend into the I will ascend into the clouds. The pride was manifested in, in the heart of Lucifer because the Lord, uh, it says the, he said it in his heart. The Lord saw this in his heart. I will be like the Most High. I will sin into the mountain. Let me go there real quick. Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14. You must understand that pride is dangerous. Pride is, is, uh, is, will, forf will have you forfeit the kingdom if you are not obedient to the Lord. If you don't renounce it, if you do not seek the Lord to ask him to search your heart of any evil thing. Now he says this, for you, uh, I'm going to start at verse 12. How are you fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How are you cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the size of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. So Satan, Lucifer said all these things in his heart because the Lord saw it in his heart. He knows all things. All things are naked before the Lord. This is what Jesus saw, he said, I saw Satan fall from heaven as lightning to the ground. So the next verse, the next verse, it says, yet you shall be brought down to hell to the size of the pit, brought down to hell. So the believer that is given authority, given power from Christ Jesus and the Holy Ghost and the Father you have power to command demon spirits to go because of the fall of Lucifer from heaven and the fall of man and the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ Jesus because he has defeated sin and death. You have power to do these things. But guess what? Don't rejoice in that alone, but rejoice according to holiness According to believing on Jesus Christ, who is the only one that can save you, do not rejoice in that alone, but rejoice that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. And so you have power to do these things. You have power to command demon spirits to go in Jesus' name. You, can, you have power from on high, from the Spirit of God, and declare victory. Jesus says, be of good cheer, for I have overcame the world. That is dominion. He has overcame the he has overcame the world. That is dominion. And to bring your flesh under subjection is dominion. Exercising dominion. Let to commend to ask the Lord to let not any iniquity because he's in control. Let not any iniquity have dominion over me. That is dominion at a low degree, but at a high degree. You, when you exercise dominion, like when you walk in the Walmart or any grocery store, any place, and you seek God above everything, acknowledging Him in all of your ways, Lord God, I pray your grace before I enter this, this building. Lord God, let you be glorified in dominion. Lord God, you are worthy of my praise. And Lord God, I pray that you will um, give me power to walk in the Spirit in your power, your authority, and shoot and protect me from the spirit of the world. That's that's power. That's authority. That's dominion because he, he gave you this. He gave you this and he wants you to be successful in this life so he can promote you, so you can spend forever with God because 
You are a king and a priest. If you are a true and born again believer, you are a king and a priest. The high priest after the order of Melchizedek is Jesus Christ. He is the head of man. Man is head of the woman. The head of Christ is God the Father. And that is order. And when you exercise and, and know these things, because that's wisdom as well, you have dominion. And the demons know who are Christ. The demons know. Just like, like I mentioned, the sons of Sceva. Paul I know. Jesus I know. But who are you? You who do not believe. You who do not know Jesus. You who don't have the Spirit of God on you or in you. Who are you? The demons know. The devils know. So, I'm going to continue in Nahum, uh, verse 6, chapter 1. It says, Who can stand before his indignation? The Lord's indignation. And who can abide in the fierceness of his anger? His fury is poured out like fire on the rocks are thrown down by him. Now, I check this. Now, listen to this. I like the way it says right here in verse 7. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knows them that trust in him. Do you trust in the Lord? Is the Lord your stronghold? Is he, might, is he mighty in your life? And if he is, praise the Lord, praise the living God Almighty. You have dominion. And you need to learn how to exercise it. You need to learn how to exercise it, just like um, in the Old Testament, um, Abraham, how he how he exercised dominion. Um, uh, it's many examples I'm trying to think of that is coming coming to me all at once. Well, King David, King David, how he uh, he was how he was king of over Israel, and he ran. He he was hidden. From the Lord, from Saul, but yeah, after Saul, after the Lord uh, smitten Saul because of his curse, you know, King David grew in power and authority because he was the anointed king of the Lord, who whose heart was after God's own heart, and but yet he was merciful because God is merciful. Blessed is the merciful. Blessed are the merciful, for they they will obtain mercy. That's what the Lord says. Let me see, but in, let me see, verse 8, I got to read verse 7 again. The Lord is good and stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knows them that trust in him. But with an overflowing flood, he will make an utter end of the place thereof, and darkness shall pursue his enemies. So, who are your enemies in your life? Well, we do have natural human being enemies that are enemies of the cross, enemies of Jesus who hate Jesus, who do not believe in Jesus, um, yet God desires none to perish, but yet many are called and few are chosen. Many don't answer the calling. And when you do what you want to do, think how you want to think, listen and seek who you want to seek other than Christ Jesus, you are God's enemy. The word of God says in James, friendship with the world is enmity with God. So you friends with the world, you are God's enemy. And not only for the for mankind who, who disobeys the Lord, but you have demon spirits who are also enemies. The devil is your enemy. His job is to still kill and destroy. Still your focus, still your life, still your, your desire for God. He has the deception. He has, he has enough deception in his mind to do so. To kill your life because he's a murderer from the beginning, the word of God says. And you saw that in Cain, the world's first murderer. And then he wants to he wants to uh, destroy your life, completely destroy your, your passion for God. And reprobate is the level or a mindset that you will do, you do not want to be. You do not want to be reprobate because your life is destroyed and there is no there is no hope for that individual because that's that's like a fugitive or a vagabond a vagabond is, on, is another degree of reprobate and you you have a mindset that is 
not willing to repent or seek the Lord. That's the curse of the Lord on, a man, on an individual's life. And the devil is the the devil is the the author of that. The author of deception. The author. He's the father of all lies. You set your mind on evil things. You're going to be defiled. The word of God says, I will set no evil thing on the, I will set my, how's it going? Let me go back to that. That's Psalms 101. That's Psalms 101. Psalms 101 verse 3. I will set no evil thing before my eyes. Yeah, there it is, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I will set no evil thing before my eyes. I hate the works of those who fall away. It will not cling to me. A perverse or fraud heart will depart from me. I will not know a wicked person. That's the Lord on, on David. I will not know a wicked person. Didn't Jesus say that? Didn't the Lord say that he will say that? Depart from me, I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. So you work iniquity, you work for the devil. You work iniquity, you work lawlessness, you work for the devil. That, that's, that's just a straightforward, honest truth. According to the word of God, Jesus um, is your only hope. Jesus is your only hope for salvation. And I'm trying to remember what I saw in Psalms because I read this every day and there's so much value in the word of God. There's so much value in the word of God. Give me one second. Mm. We have heard with our ears. As our heart on him. Well, in Psalm 5, I saw something else too. Now, this is another example of dominion. Now, in verse 9 of Psalm 5, it says, Destroy thou them, or destroy them, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels. Cast them out in the multitude of their transgressions, for they have rebelled against you. So, in authority, commanding demon spirits to go, you can say that, Lord God, they have rebelled against you. The demon spirits have rebelled against God. The devil has rebelled against God because they were in heaven. But And then guess what? There is no hope for them. Destroy thou them, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels. No, that's, that's like you in prayer. Disappoint their counsels, Lord God. In Jesus' glorious name, you are praying dominion and power. Against the wicked, you are praying to mean the power against the ungodly in their thoughts. But the hope for the ungodly, who are who is mankind, who is sinful man, is salvation and repentance to Christ Jesus. Because in mankind we have no merit within ourselves, meaning we are we are not worthy of heaven. We are not worthy of heaven. But Christ, and if you can see that, you need to cast yourself on Jesus. Cast, throw yourself on Christ Jesus. Repenting of all dead works, even good deeds. Brother Joseph, what do you mean by repenting of good deeds? Repenting of everything that you have trusted and throwing yourself on Christ alone. That is your hope. He is your only hope to spend forever with God. To spend forever with God because the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. And when you have these things engraved in your heart and meditating on the promises of God for your life, you have victory. You are commanded of the Lord to be of good cheer, for he has overcame the world. His meat was the will of the Father. Jesus did everything perfect. He was perfect in thought, word, and deed, and he knew no sin. Yet he took our punishment that we all rightly deserve, 
He defeated sin and death, rose again on the third day with great power and glory. Now, you want to see dominion? I'm going to show you dominion. I'm going to show you dominion. Matthew 25, it says this. Now, before I read Matthew 25, in the, it talks about the last couple of chap, the last couple of verses of this chapter. It talks about the, the day of the Lord. But do recognize that Revelation 1 says, Behold, he comes in the clouds, and every eye will see him, even they that pierced him. All kindreds, meaning all nations, all tongues, will wail because of him. Even so, amen. That's what it says. Now, Matthew 25, Jesus comes, Jesus comes in the clouds. Where am I? Is that verse I start out with? Take therefore the town of it. No, it's a him shall be gathered. Okay, right here in verse 31. Jesus comes in the clouds. Every eye will see him, even they that pierce him. It says this in verse 31 of Matthew 25. When the Son of Man will come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. This is authority and this is dominion because Jesus Christ is Lord. And before him will he gather all nations, meaning everyone will stand before the Holy One of Israel. Everyone will stand before Christ Jesus the Lord. All, he, him will he gather all nations and, sh and shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And guess what? He will set the sheep on his right hand and the goats on the left. Now, those on the right hand are the sheep. Those on the, on the right hand are those who believe on Jesus Christ, who put their trust, who are genuinely born again, who have trusted in him in all of their ways, who have endured to the end, and that are made right with God the Father because of Christ. Now, it says this. On the right hand, he will gather them on the right hand. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then will the king say to them on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom, prepared for, from the foundations of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you came to me. In prison, and you visited me visited me then shall the righteous remember the sheep on the right hand are righteous that's why it's called upright that's why we are made upright because we'll be up and on his right hand and uprightness describes holiness it says in verse 37 then will the righteous answer him saying lord when did we see you hungry and fed you or thirsty and gave you drink when did we saw you a stranger and took you in and naked and clothed you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and came to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Verily I say to you, and as much as you have done it to the one of the least of these, my brethren, he calls them brethren. He calls us, he will call, if you are righteous with God and you are a Christian, he will, he will call you brethren. He will call you brethren. Yes, in Jesus' name. If you are a Muslim, you will not be on the right hand of God. If you are a Muslim, you will not be here on the right hand of God. Muslims believe that Jesus Christ is a prophet. Muslims believe that Jesus Christ is a prophet. But let me, I'm going to explain that to you. And I hope, and I hope you stay. I'm going to explain that to you. But let me finish reading the goats on the left. What happens to the goats on the left? And before I explain that, I, I said many videos ago, you have the world that use the term GOAT, which in acronym says greatest of all time. So you have celebrities that believe that they're the greatest of all time. In pride and competition. Now, then shall he say also to them on the left hand, depart from me, you curse into everlasting 
fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and gave you no meat. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you took me not in. Naked and you clothed me not. Sick and in prison and you visited me not. Then shall they also answer him saying, Lord, when do we see you hungry? or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister to you. Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say to you, inasmuch as you did not to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these, the these will go into everlasting punishment. The goats on the left will go into everlasting punishment. Guess who the goats are? Muslim, Hebrew, Israelites, uh, Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, and every false religion that denies the deity of Jesus Christ by not believing Jesus Christ is God manifested in the flesh, you will have everlasting punishment and you will be in hell. Roman Catholics, yes, they will end up in hell. There will be the goats on the left. If you are truly born again as a Christian, Christ-like, and have the Holy Ghost and endure to the end and obedient to Jesus Christ, you will be the sheep on the right hand. These will go into everlasting punishment, but the righteous to life eternal. And the person who is a Muslim, please believe in Notice that Jesus Christ is not a prophet. He was just not, he was not just a prophet. Would a prophet lie? Would a prophet lie? No, of course not. The Quran says, and I again I said this in my last video. I encourage no one to dive into the Quran. I encourage no one to Google search on what it says in the Quran, but I know that it says this. That the new covenant cannot be corrupted, meaning the new testament in the word of God cannot be corrupted. So if you believe that Jesus Christ was just a prophet, then you know he's not lying when he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and that no one comes to the Father but by me. Please believe it says that. In John chapter 4, is it 4? Hmm. No, no, John chapter 6. And li listen to this. Listen to this. I don't receive, and I don't receive a greeting, a greeting. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a respecter of persons because the Lord God commanded his people to be not respecter of persons. God's not respecter of persons. So why should I respect your belief if it's not of the Lord Jesus Christ? So it says this. Uh, John chapter 6, therefore they gathered them together and filled the twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves and remained over and above to them that had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, this is of it. Now these people, when they seen the miracles that Jesus Christ the Lord has done, they thought this is of a truth. They said this is of a truth, that prophet that should come into the world. They thought he was a prophet, but then Jesus gives them, he says, when Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him king, he departed again into the mountain of alone. So he went up and prayed. And then so, let me, let me show you that Jesus Christ is more than just a prophet. Jesus answered them answered and said, Verily, verily, I say to you, you seek me not because you saw the miracles, but because you did eat the loaves and were filled. Labor not for the meat which perishes, meaning do not be in works and other doctrines or in other beliefs because they all perish. But for that meat, labor for that meat that endures to everlasting life. Jesus is that meat Jesus, he said, my flesh, you may not understand this if you are still watching. Jesus' flesh is that meat. He says, my flesh is meat indeed. My blood is drink indeed. That's what he said. 
And without it, you would not have life eternal. You, you in, uh, in other false religions, you have not eternal life because you have not believed on the name of the only begotten Son of God, who is Jesus Christ. It says, labor for that meat that labor for that meat that endures to everlasting life, which the Son of, of Man shall give to you, for him has God the Father sealed. God the Father has sealed his Son Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, as the only begotten, that whosoever believes on him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. And that's a cross reference between that and John 3.16. And so the, here is here is prophecy. <laughs> I will say that. I will, here is prophecy. He who does not believe is condemned already. He who believes is, is not condemned, but he who believes not is condemned already because he has not believed in the only begotten Son of God. That's prophecy. You must believe on Jesus to be saved and to be truly converted so that you, you too can spend forever with God. And be not cared about with diverse and strange doctrines, for it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace and not with meats that have not profited them who have been occupied therein. That's Hebrews 13 and 9. So strange doctrines is the Quran. Strange doctrines is the Watchtower. Strange doctrines is the Book of Mormon. Strange doctrines is other doctrines that corrupted the minds and hearts of Hebrew Israelites and other false belief, belief uh, doctrines. They get tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine and they get they, they, they are deceived. God, the word of God says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. So you're dishonorable for the Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, and just believing that he is a prophet, you are mocking the Lord of all creation. You are mocking God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. You are mocking his express image of his person. You are mocking the brightness of the Father's glory, who is Jesus Christ who is Lord and Savior. So my strong encouragement, repent and believe the gospel of Jesus Christ and endure to the end by following him, by being faithful and obedient to you, obedient to him, and you too will be the sheep on his right hand, enduring forever with Christ Jesus. This is Brother Joseph Herbert Jr. This is for his glory.